Hello, hockey, basketball, and soccer fans. My name is David. I thought I would start this video at uh, 1.43 on the afternoon of Monday, 20th of November, 2023, North American Easter Time, 6.43 GMT in the evening. So, yes, in my previous video, uh, previous uh, normal-length video, mentioned a uh, so-called Week in Review for Canada's NHL, uh, NHL NBA teams. After that, the uh, weekend win by the Raptors over the Detroit Pistons, over the Detroit Pistons team that had motored in, but had gotten beat badly. I forget, was it at least 30-point win by the Raptors? Well, hopefully the Raptors will continue on their momentum, but I'm not going to bet on it too much. This Raptors team has been hot and cold throughout the week, throughout the, uh, throughout the month. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to going to do just uh, a quick rundown of the games uh, the Raptors are expected to play. Uh, so we have games against... Um, so it'll be a, a two-game roadie. Those will be back-to-back. -back. So, be uh, so it'll be Tuesday Eastern Time uh, in Orlando against the Magic. And Wednesday Eastern Time against the Pacers, based in Indianapolis. So it's going to be a lot of flying to be done. But at least they, go, they come home, play the Cav, play the, the Chicago Bulls. Then they fly out and go you know, play the Cavs, Brooklyn Nets, and you know, 26th and 28th of this month. And then Phoenix Suns at home on the 29th. So going to be a very interesting month to say the least and uh, hopefully it'll be there so now I'm going to go to where did it go I forget it so yeah the Jets you know Winnipeg Jets one all right we'll go here and we'll see what the uh, what happened during the week during the Saturday games oh no that in the turn of the uh, power rankings put out by Shad the hockey guy well, if he's one Sunday Eastern Time, early Sunday Eastern Time, uh, the Canucks moved down one spot. The Leafs moved up one. But I'm uh, uh, NBA, you know, NBA, NHL teams. Canucks were were the, were the highest ranked. Jets second highest ranked. The Leafs third highest ranked. Sens fourth highest ranked. Uh, the Habs fifth highest ranked, having moved down a whole bunch into being the third row from the top. Second row from the bottom. Uh, six, no, second worst ranked, the Oilers. And the uh, lowest ranked of the teams, the Flames. But again, the Flames did show some fight, a lot more fight than I thought they would. Scoring may be an issue. Who knows? Just going to go here is uh, just going to see what the Oilers have. So like, oh, wait, where are the here? Where am I going with the order there? So what I'm gonna do is uh Alright, so I'm subscribed, so yeah, I'm gonna I may join that. So that's gonna go here. Orders Nation. Kind of right link as soon as I can. About will the orders get back on track in South Florida against the Panthers? <laughs> if I were a betting man, I would say it won't be easy. I ain't gonna lie. <laughs> I think the Panthers have some... Uh, yes, they have issues, but... These Panthers are just... They're just very good team. Leafs have had trouble against them. Although, in Sweden, the Leafs... Went 2 for 2 on the window meter. And 4 out of a possible 4 points. So... I'm gonna go... See what happens on the Saturday games here. So, yeah. So, Sens beat the Wild in a shootout, 2-1. Uh, the Oilers got beat by the Bolts, 6-4. Figuratively speaking, having gotten zapped. <laughs> by, you know, via six goals, five of them other than empty netters. Uh, Winnipeg Jets handily beat the Coyotes. The original Jets squad, 5-2. And yes, the shootout loss to the flame by the Flames, the Isles, five four. 
Yeah. <laughs> Wasn't so much scoring that beat that hurt the Flames. It was the lack of effective defense that really killed them that game. Yeah, the goals fell behind. They did come back. They got that point, ground out a point, which matters. And uh, Canucks lost a close one, 4-3, in regulation to the Kraken. But after having lost on Thursday, 5-2, to Calgary Flames. <laughs> after having barely beat the Isles in overtime, thinking, these Canucks are not doing too good. <laughs> that discussion... In that early Monday Eastern Time live stream hosted by Cannot Clay. Um, also, no, no, real, his real name is Clay Ilu. And well, well, concerned about whether about the Canucks' lackluster play. Well, whether it's divisional opponents or not, it's not, you know, not good. Three of four games lost, and all those losses haven't come in regulation. Not good. If the Canucks can turn things around, well, we'll have to see. But again, I go back to also refer to the video by the hockey by Shan, the hockey guy, about teams being having point percentages while in last season up below fifty. If there's a realistic chance of any of them seeing playoff action this season, well, of Canadian teams that are in that boat, I know there are uh, the Habs, Flames, and Oilers. Habs have really rocketed down to the bottom. It's been a not so good month for the Habs. <laughs> Let's see how. Let's see how the Habs have been there. So, I'm going to go to the Habs, see what they've done. It's going to check out there. So, yeah. So. <laughs> November, it's been a bad. <laughs> Last 10, the Habs have two wins, seven regulation losses, and one shootout loss. That you are lost having come late last month to the Golden Knights, 3-2, over at T-Mobile Arena. Yeah, it's so... The Habs have struggled about as much as home on the road wall. The Habs have played more home games, so... And have played five home games and four away games. So, the Habs have one win each. But home, it's not been so sweet for them. <laughs> A point percentage of 20... Or three, is that correct? Yeah, so a point percentage of 20 when it comes to home games and 25 when it comes to road games. So not, you know, well below what they need to be. So I'm going to go here. Just, yeah, some pretty ugly one there. So there are two games the Habs have played that have not featured, well, three, the Habs have played that have featured fewer than this many goals allowed. So... 3-2 overtime wins over the Wings, over at uh, Little Caesar Arena, and at home to the Bruins. Caden Primo having started in net for the Habs on the 9th of November, that away game down in Detroit. And the home game, Sam Montebo, who's a gold medalist, for, uh, who's a gold medalist from the 2023 IHF Adult Men's World Championship for, team, for, for the Guerrero and Canadian team. Well, Monty was good. Definitely give a thumbs up for that performance. I mean, maybe it was because of all the shots he faced that had to have up and up behind a not so good Habs team that season, that past season, and that made him dialed in and determined to try to salvage something, at least get some sort of a trophy or something, and go for the bigger goal. And he did. Gold medal ain't too bad. Kept the team in fame, so let's see how they are. It's kind of been a mixed bag. So six three, loss to the to the Blues, um, and then the next start three two overtime win over the Bruins, two one regulation loss to the Flames. So not bad, <laughs> not bad either. The last two starts, uh, either the two games which he, you know, I can't think of any goalie polls that have been made, but yeah, the Habs have been struggling. So now have a one there. All right. So the losses have been both in sh you know, the you know extra time losses have been in shootouts. So the Habs since last preseason, following last preseason, have a not so good seven nine zero and two win regulation loss OT loss shootout loss record. So sixteen out of a possible thirty six. So 
16 over 36, so that's, uh, all right, so 4 out of 9. So 44 and 4 ninths. No, 4 out of every 9 available points. Not good. <laughs> so... So, the sports end of the news is Calvin Bickard. Just gonna see if we can just get over here. And just get over to you. Know. So, from Sportsnet, we have this. The news here, Calvin Bickard starting for the Oilers in that game against the Panthers. So, yeah, the Oilers are... Yeah. Jack Campbell has struggled in the HL. Probably ain't going to come back. I mean, there's theories about whether he'll come back playing play in the NHL at all. But at least for as long as he's under contract with the others, Campbell probably ain't going to make another appearance. So Siv this season, when he had been up in the NHL with the others, now he's down with the Bakersfield Condors. A five-season, $25 million U.S. dollar contract that he had signed with then Oilers GM Ken Holland, who, well, with Holland now, just a figurehead, GM name only, not really with the decision making power. Yeah, go figure. The incompetence knows no bounds at the Oilers management group, the Oilers entertainment group. It's just this guy is dumb. These dumb decisions. I mean, yeah, they had you know because this is going on. They hadn't had great goal dinning with you know, Mike Smith and Miko Koskinen, but those Oilers got to a conference final. That's right. Yes, they were swept, but when it comes to, all right, you can see what the others are, That's, you know, two seasons ago. The Edmonton others, two seasons ago, so, I mean, they, their defense wasn't good, wasn't very good. Yeah, we we'll have, uh, no. Koskinen, Smith, and Skinner. Stuart Skinner was a rookie, he played the Start the fewest number of games that you know regular season games at twelve. Skinner did not play in any playoff game, so I go to the AV series. Um, games two and three were each decided by were each decided by at least two goals. It's going to see about the other you know, playoff game on the fourth of June. You know, start on the fourth of June, two thousand twenty-two Eastern Time. So it's going to. There and uh, that was a 4 2 final score. So, yeah, or the ring in the Western final. So, so scoring in the uh, first period, David countered by goals by Nichushkin. Well, two of them anyway. 2 1 Avs after the second period. Always oh, first period. So, game was tied after the first period at 1 1. And Achushkin scored a, a goal in the second period at the 437 mark. So it was 2 1 Avs after the, first, the third period. And uh, yeah, so the game was closer than it actually turned out to be. Achushkin having scored, empty netter. And obviously, blah, 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 Miko ranted in. Yeah, I get my name mixed up. <laughs> having scored an unassisted goal with just half a minute to go in regulation. So yeah, 4 2. So that was close. The Oilers did make things close, but ultimately didn't get a cigar. You know, close but no cigar. Very famous expression out there. Yeah, so yeah. So overall, the only game that was really close was, well, our big year. You'll see if that game won there. So in terms of closeness, you'll see if there's empty netter. It's very handy that the NHL has these scores on there. So gonna go to here so it'll be into the third period when uh so yeah okay landscog empty netter yeah okay so those two those, so yeah so you to go here so where do you go so games one and three so really all th all you know three of the four games were close so games one and three each fe featured avs empty netters to make the games you know uh, two goal wins rather than one goal wins. So yeah, the others really made things interesting in that series, but yeah, they didn't win. And it's been a long way down since then. And uh, in one of my videos earlier, I you know, I 
go. We're just gonna go. Okay, we're just gonna go to. Let's see if I can get the video there. All right. Does he do the others? All right. Where do we go here? Oh yeah, this is the other thing. This is the thing here. So as you can see, a YouTube short. Yeah. So this is the interesting one here. So after returning from LA, after having won a game, you know, for the fourth game that series in overtime, the guy tied things up. Well, look at the series. You know, score line. It wasn't all that great. Oops. How do you mean do that? Here. So what I'm gonna do is. For the next season, for last season. So, let's go back there. So, we're going to see her. It's going to um, go to here. So, it's going to go. That was. So, that was game three. Empty netter at the end. Scored by Rantanin. This is game one of the conference final. The others qualified for. Uh, in the 2020s, the, the one they still have. So I'm gonna go, do 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 do, gonna go there. And yes, and yeah, a whole bunch of red ink is gonna be ended up losing. So I'm gonna go. The 2032 23 season for the others are just gonna be here, just. Yeah, so go. In terms of the postseason, yeah. Not defensive gems, so the others. Really only had only played one game which they allowed under three goals. And among games, the others the others allowed at least three goals. They allowed at least four in one, two, th oh, right here. So we have one, okay, one, two, three. Three in three in three of the games which the others played in which they allowed at least three goals. In the King series last season, the Oilers allowed at least four. So, it's remarkable the Oilers, you know, were able to score. They have outscored the problems. Not so much against the Golden Knights. So, look here. Wow. Not good. <laughs> Let's see here. So, you know, see here. Yeah. See if that game was close. That was, I think that was the first game. Was that empty netter? Nothing. I forget. I was gonna go. All right. So, see if it was. Uh, if there's anything there. Oh, it's empty netter. Okay. Jack Eichel on this goal, with a bit over half a minute to go in regulation. So yeah. The others. <laughs> oh wait, that's a penalty. Two, you know, bench minor for two men, men, men on the ice. The power play. But even if it had been, I think that not looked too good. <laughs> yeah, the others' defensive issues were biggies, and <laughs> and the, on the an early Sunday Eastern Time edition of the Gotcha Back podcast or Seen podcast. Just to start off the podcast, Ryan Rashad with TSN claimed that the Oilers had choked away multiple leads. I can't help but agree with him. Look at that there. There was a 2 nothing lead. Pardon, you know, 2-1 after the first period. Then it was 3-2 lead. Then a 4-3 lead against the Bulls. And, well, yeah. <laughs> the defense just didn't work. They basically threw it under the bus. Skinner, Stuart Skinner, who started that game and who's played every minute of that game, other than when he was pulled, well, didn't matter because, I mean, yes, he allowed multiple goals, but the defense was so bad that that even if he'd played better, who knows if the Oilers would have won or even gotten a point. The Oilers are, <laughs> have been a dumpster fire. You know, it will be any surprise if McDavid Dreisaitl decides 
I've got to go. I don't want, I don't want to play for these others anymore. Yes, both of them have full-blown new move, move clauses in their contracts. I believe for every season in them, those contracts. Doesn't matter, though, because if they want out, maybe the other have a little choice. I mean, otherwise, you know, the locker room gets toxic and so. You know. And, you know, if, if McDavid and Drysdale decide that they want to go, they don't want to go to another team, I ain't going to blame one bit. This other season has been a disaster. Look at the NHL standings here. I'm just gonna look at the NHL standings to see whether they're here. So here we go. The wild card standings as of games that concluded on Sunday Eastern Time. So we're gonna go on the 19th of November. So so when it comes to teams, the Canucks have the best record among all teams, Canadian teams. Uh, you know, best, you know, highest number of points, 25 over 18 games. So a point, percent, point percentage of 69.4, even after two losses, both in reg two straight losses, both in regulation. Next up, all right, we have 64-7. So we have teams, you know, the Leafs and, Jet Leafs and Jets teams, Having played 17 games, 17 game each, 22 points, Twins, third in their respective divisions, Jets Central, Leafs in the Atlantic. So Jets have a three-point lead over the Blues, four over the Coyotes, but a massive eight-point lead over the Wild. So yeah, so if the Jets can stay up, so you had the Blues and Coyotes with the Wild kind of going going down after two straight losses. Uh, both in overtime, you know, in overtime ones over the weekend to the Sens and then Leafs. Yeah. Things are looking uh, not so good. I mean, the Oilers have an opportunity to catch up to the most of the Wild with a win over the Panthers. But that win ain't going to be easy to come by. The Preds have fallen off quite a bit. Three wins, having given their only points in their last ten. So six points in their last ten games. Not good. So the Preds are seventh in the Western Conference wildcard race. The Oilers, eighth. But yeah, the Oilers won't come easy. Yeah. It will not be. So yeah, let's see what happens. So yeah. Right, so back to this here. So in terms of the non-playoff teams... You have the Sens and Habs. Sens with uh, Sens and Habs with tied with sixteen points, tied sixteen points. Sens having played fewer games, fifteen to the Habs, eighteen. So that means well, sixteen points. So right at the bottom of the Atlantic Division. So seventh, tied for seventh. But the Sens are actual seventh based on fewer more games, fewer games played in the Habs. So respective points percentages of fifty three point three and forty four point four. So then we're going to go on to the Calgary Flames at 44.1 via 15 points over 17 games. So it's going to be very, very close. The crucial game against Seattle Kraken could mean the Flames overtake overtake the Habs for uh, second worst, you know, for, you know, third worst point percentage among Canadian teams rather than second worst. The others are easily the worst at 34.4. Point percentage. So let's see what happens. So that was you. It's gonna go to the games to be played. All right. So, all right. So we're gonna go to. Before I go to this uh, Earth Nation live stream, I'm just gonna have a rundown of games to be take place on uh, there. So on Monday, the others uh, playing an away game against the Panthers. Uh, the the Canucks hosting. The Sharks and the Flames in Seattle against the local Kraken squad. So the Flames Kraken game we broadcast on three Sportsnet regional channels. The Canucks one on Sportsnet Pacific and SNP channel blacked out. For anyone who doesn't have a blackout busting subscription such as that to NHL Center Ice. I'm not trying to promote that. I'm not trying to promote such subscriptions. I want to say that I have found NHL Center Ice to be very helpful to get around what otherwise would be frustrating TV blackouts so yeah definitely look forward to watching the games but it's going to be kind of an overlap i mean flames and kraken 
and the Canucks and Sharks be going flipping between the two. At least one I can just put on the Sportsnet app on one of the tablets, and on the other just watch you know the uh, Dell Five TV. Yeah, it's going to be a busy night of hockey watching. I'm not sure if I'll be up that at that time. I'll do my best. So there'll be no game for you any NHL team on Tuesday Eastern time. Uh, but there will be one featuring the Raptors. Uh, so Wednesday Eastern time. Uh, Leafs don't play until later on this week. So it's going to be Jets flying into Western Florida to play the Bolts. And uh, the Oilers will be flying uh, will be flying from South Florida to face the Canes in the North Carolina interior. And then Flames in an away game against the Preds. The Canucks in an away game against the Avs. Habs in an away game against the Ducks. There will be no game to be played on Thursday Eastern Time, but Friday Eastern Time, There'll be a whole bunch of games. The Leafs will be back in action uh, in an afternoon game against the Blackhawks at the United Center. So that's two Eastern broadcast start. Oilers be facing on. Will be at uh, Capital One Arena to face the Capitals. And then later, on, a little bit later on, the Habs will be play. Will be in an away game against the Sharks. Oh, and then the evening Eastern Time games, we have the Sens hosting the, hosting the Isles. The Jets in action in South Florida against the Panthers. Flames in action in Dallas against the Stars. And the Canucks, very, very late in action against the Kraken. So, Saturday Eastern Time, it'll be... Uh, it'll start off in terms of the Canadian team, the Habs hosting... Uh, have an away game against the Kings at Crypto.com Arena, formerly known as Staples Center. Then it'll be in the evening, PPG Paints Arena, the Leafs, will be playing the Penguins. In, 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 in the two late games on Hockey Night in Canada, Flames in uh, you know, Flames over in Denver to play the Avs, and the Canucks down in the San Francisco Bay Area to play the Sharks. That's going to be on Saturday. And then to finish off the weekend, not the relevant coming weekend, see what we can do here. Let's see what I can do here. Alright, I'm just going to. Uh, All right, so Sunday we have so we have ten games on tap, two of which you know you know excuse me, five games on tap, two of them featuring Canadian teams in action. So the Jets playing an interdivisional game again. Well, there'll be both interdivisional games. So the Jets will be over at Bridgestone Arena to play the local Preds squad. Uh, the Oilers will be hosting the Ducks in the other game. So 8 Eastern Time, Jets and Preds, that's probably on one of the TSN channels, and we'll need uh, we uh, on a subscription that's that's based in the Jets viewing region or via NHL Center Ice if it's Canadian TV broadcast. So let's see about the Oilers and Ducks, if it's going to be on Sportsnet, only one of the, or one or two, one, one of the Sportsnet channels or multiple ones. Could be interesting because I definitely don't want to see that game. I don't want to flip between the two games. I just have one on the Sportsnet app, the other not. Other via available five TV. So it'll be yeah. So not gonna get to the uh, not gonna get to the games to take place after the 26th of November. It's already getting quite long. It's like close to half an hour already. So definitely looking forward to seeing the to watching that Oilers Nation live stream. At least what's left of it. And uh, in the meantime. I'm going to say, uh, go Leafs go, go Raptors go, go Toronto RC go, and uh, go Canada go. But before I say, if you do like the video, please make sure to click the like button. If you want to subscribe to the channel, please feel free to do so. 
I try to put out videos at least every other week. And that's it for now. I'm going to uh, check out that Oilers Nation live stream. And uh, I, I mean, in terms of uh, being in terms of playoff team, in terms of Canadian teams, I'm really hoping for a non hab such team to win a Stanley Cup. Have the won so many Cups following 1967. But I'm really looking forward to another team, you know, Canadian team winning the Stanley Cup. It's hard to know which one. Canucks look like they're in the best position. Jets and Leafs are kind of teetering on the brink, you know, in top three divisional spots, but with the potential to, to drop out of them. If their play lets up too much. Leafs are in the least secure playoff spot. Yeah, the top three divisional one doesn't matter. You got the you know, got two teams on the rear end. So it's gonna be very interesting to find out what happens this week. Leafs have two two games. Uh back to back. Good news. Leafs I mean, and, you know, the good news is the you know they get, you know, they get at least one calendar day off after their game in Pittsburgh. The bad news, it's consecutive evenings, Eastern time, and, well, consecutive days. They get a little bit more time off than they typically would. So an afternoon Eastern time game over in Chicago, and an evening Eastern time game in Pittsburgh. So they get more than just, so they do get kind of like slightly over 24 hours off between what is likely to be the final whistle of the Blackhawks game and the opening face-off of the um, the Penguins game. Anyway, we'll go and see how the rest of the afternoon Eastern time goes.